to join us today. Hello guys. This is Amelia. And this is Jonathan. And we're, we're the, the Two, two Broke, Broke Explorers. Explorers. Today we're visiting a nature reserve in the middle of the suburbs. For those of us who know of this nature reserve's existence, we think of it as well-known, popular, and just really a fantastic place. But surprisingly, there are still people who actually live in Durban and have never even heard of this place, let alone visited it. So uh, you guys must be asking yourself and us at, through the screen, where are we? Well, it's the Kenneth Stainbank Nature Reserve in Yellowwood Park. And it's awesome. Come hike with us. Kenneth Stainbank Nature Reserve is run by the Ezenvilo Wildlife, but that wasn't always the case. It originally used to be a family farm owned by the Stainbank family. Daring Stainbank, who started here in 1857, decided to bring a piece of his homeland to the African bush and decided to build this beautiful castle you see behind us. It's known as Kudmore Castle. The farm was then turned into a nature reserve and about 160 hectares was donated to the state of Natal and to the people of South Africa by his son Kenneth in the 1940s. Kenneth made an arrangement with the South African government at the time that for as long as his life and the life of his immediate children, they could enjoy and use the castle itself still as their family home or however they chose to use it. For many years they used it as a museum to let people, let the public know that this area has so much history to it. This castle was used as a refuge for thousands of Indians during the uprisings. It was also a frequent stop by King Shaka when he used to ride with his MPs through the area. Tragically, his daughter passed away in May 2019, which means the castle and everything within it now belongs to the state. His remaining descendants are trying to arrange with the state that the castle could be open to the public again so that they can benefit from not only the history that's inside it but also the beauty that it has. With all this amazing history here we really did try to arrange a tour inside the castle but due to the current circumstances and well the castle being owned by the state and the state not allowing anyone into it yet unfortunately we could not arrange a tour. But all is not lost. Kenneth, Daring's son, had a sister. Her name was Mary. She was a very well-known sculpturist and artist, also around about the 1940s. Somehow or other, the family managed to keep the cow shed on the other side of the castle as a gallery. Fortunately, we were able to arrange with one of the Stainbank descendants to give us a tour of this gallery. Let's go. Let's go.
this reserve is not only amazing because of its history and the art gallery, it has so many facets that make it one of Durban's most beautiful hidden gems. It has got a wide variety of not only bird species but also wildlife species, but it is most notably known for its almost tame impala and virtual zebra. For those who would like to get some clean exercise, there are over 10 kilometers of walking or hiking trails, or if you're a runner, you can run them. And there's also around about 10 kilometers of mountain biking trails in the reserve. Personally, we enjoy coming here because of its disabled friendly, not only picnic site, but also there is a bit of a trail where uh, a wheelchair is actually able to go. It's uh, paved over and obviously with our granddad that uh, has a bit of a trouble walking at the moment, it is a nice outing to bring him here. The disabled picnic site is not the only picnic site. It has about three other picnic sites that one can really enjoy in the reserve. And of course, there are some shortish roads that you can take a car, well, we take Daisy, down and enjoy a mini game drive where you can actually get pretty close to those Impala and those Zebra. We put all the relevant information such as location, website and contact information in the description below if you guys decide you do want to come visit here. You do, trust me, you do. <laughs> Anyways, that's not what we have to chat about right now. In our last video at Mount Moreland, we spoke about the idea that eventually we want to monetize our YouTube channel. In case you're worried that you will then have to start paying to watch our videos, that's not the case. Basically, all that means is that YouTube starts selling advertising space on our videos and we get a part of that revenue. If you're wondering why we want to do this, well, simply put, life has been really tough for everyone over the last year and we are certainly not immune to it. Our regular part-time job in the tourist industry came to an abrupt end with the start of COVID. And Jonathan had a part-time job as a web developer and that came to an end as well because the people that he was working for were losing their clients because their clients just couldn't afford to pay for, for web development anymore because of the lockdown. And both Amelia and my side hustles are starting to come back now because the lockdown has eased. 
but it's still taking a long time to get back in the flow of things. We did manage to benefit from the 350 Rand COVID relief fund, but we were really still battling to survive. To the point that we would actually have to borrow money from generous family members. At one stage, we got some really kind and generous gifts from friends as well who knew we were battling and we are just so thankful for those family members who helped us and for those friends who helped us. But it, it hurts inside to not be able to provide for yourself. So we brainstormed ideas of a different form of income, something that could help us to survive. Now, Amelia and myself have quite often talked about starting a YouTube channel. But about what? It seemed like our predicament of being terribly broke fits into what a lot of people are battling with at the moment. A lot of people are really struggling to survive. Combine that with my physical need, we spoke about CFS before, my physical need to actually get out of the pollution belt into fresh air on a regular basis, it just seemed to fit. So the Two Broke Explorers was born. In the meantime, we've diversified our set of skills and we've started doing other things to try and help provide for ourselves so that we don't have to rely on family and friends. But that just gives you a little bit of background. In our next video, we'll explain what we would really like to ask from you, our extremely valuable viewers, and how you can help us without paying a cent. So, if you guys would love to spend a day in nature and you don't want to drive too far from the city, come here, Kenneth Steinbank Nature Reserve. And it definitely fits into our theme of budget because at only 40 Rand per person, in brackets, at time of filming, which is the 19th of December 2020, it is really affordable. I mean, it's cheaper than taking your family to the movies. And if I dare say so, it's healthier too. Thank you for watching our videos. Every viewer is important to us. So if you have questions, suggestions, or if you just want to say hi, please leave a comment below and we will try our best to get back to you. Of course, if you've gotten this far in this video or if you've gotten that far in any of our other videos, we can pretty much assume that you're actually enjoying our videos. So take a second and hit that subscribe button. It's just there, just hit it, hit it. And don't forget to ring the bell. That way you are notified when our next video goes live. That one was loud. Is that the new bell? It is. Ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> <laughs>